It's one of your best hits, uh, Minister yes. Michaelisi. <laughs> oh, thank goodness for Sister Ola Ramey putting her voice in there. Yeah. Mm. And another gem by Brother Jeff. Thank you. Yes, Ashe, Ashe. Asante Sana, Baba Jeff. That was beautiful. Had me in here jamming. I was loving it all the way. So good morning, we'll say. Happy soulful, spiritual Sunday, we'll say. And um, today we are, it is January. I know it's the second week of January, but you know, sometimes it takes a bit to kick in. So um, today, January 8th, it's, it's, it's daylight outside. Most of us have experienced uh, interesting weather last night. Those of us on, you know, out here, and um, we're thankful to be here. We are thankful for uh, just this this day. We're <laughs> so thankful for this day. We're so thankful for this time that we are here to be able to share with one another. We want to welcome everyone. Welcome one and all. Everybody who is here under the sound of my voice, we want to extend a beautiful, a beautiful hatab, a beautiful welcome to all of you. Thank you ever so much for coming in here today. I am so I'm just so with with the with the meditation and then the song to get you just hyped for the day. Please excuse me if I'm just like, you know, elevation station this morning. Now we're gonna go to the affirmation from the Teasley youth. And then after, right after them, is going to be a song by the sounds of Ma'at. So first the affirmation from the Teasley youth. We will know God's truth to be free and self-determined. Creator, help us to remember the humanity, glory, and suffering of our ancestors and to honor the struggles of our ancestors. Let us strive to bring new vision and life to our people. Let there be peace and harmony among us. Let us strive to bring... Oh, wait. Let us be loving, sharing, and creative. Let us work, study, listen, so we may learn, teach, and cultivate and cultivate self-reliance. Grant us power, O Holy One, as we struggle to resurrect our hearts and our homeland. We will raise our children according to the needs of our nation, with discipline, patience, devotion, and courage. We will strive to be the living models of the new direction for our of our people. We are an African people. We are. Ashe, thank you, Lolanyo and Sabatisa. Now we're having a song from the sounds of Ma'at. I don't know if Baba Jeff is playing a song or the songs that the sounds of um, sounds of Ma'at are coming in. As they yes, oh there we go. Hey. Um. Thank you. 
freestyle. Catch them up like this. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Seeking that reality. Yeah. Seeking reality. Thank you. Thank you. Always. I say. Always doing that. And if I recall, because that was not sounds of my aunt, just in case there's anybody here that uh heard me and then saw that. If I recall correctly, his name is Rudy Ngozi. Hopefully that's him. Rudy that's correct. Yeah, Rudy Mwangozi. Wangozi. Okay. Wangozi. Awesome. awesome. And I really do enjoy that him. I really do enjoy the playing of that song. I really I is beautiful. It's beautiful. So um next we're gonna have the historical tribute by Baba Damani. And then right after that will be another song. Um it'll just be another song. Okay. So uh, first Baba Damani with the historical tribute. Do we have Baba Damani here? Amin Ra Atep Woze. It is my honor to give the historical tribute today. The historical tribute is our continuing effort as a community to pay tribute to some significant, not necessarily famous person, place, or event in our history. Our commitment as a community is to keep alive in our hearts and minds at least seven generations of our story. Be reminded that our ancestors and contemporaries did great things when they stayed connected to spirit and continually remind ourselves that if we did great things once before, we can do great things again. We are also mindful that if we don't take the time to honor what we have done, it will be forgotten. It is my pleasure to pay tribute to a most uplifting, inspiring, proud African man and human being. George Trower Sabira. George Trower Sabira was a major influence on the subject of black entrepreneurship through his writings and speeches. His book, Black Folk's Guide to Making Big Money in America, published in 1980, emphasized that what was missing from the drive for equality was success in the economic arena and became a trendsetter for other books that followed, emphasizing economic independence and development for African people. In 1988, Sabira published what is considered the only sales training book for African Americans, Getting Black Folks to Sell. Other books were Black Folks Guide to Business Success and Money Issues in Black Male-Female Relationships. Sabira was born and raised in Philadelphia in 1944 to George R. Trower, Sr. and Roxana Trower. 
After graduating from Overbrook High School, where he was a member of the track team's mile relay team, he moved to California and attended Barstow Junior College and Pasadena City College. He earned a bachelor's degree in history from California State University, Los Angeles. He later received two graduate degrees from Rutgers Graduate School of Education and attended Rutgers Law School for a year. During the Black Power era of the 1960s, George became involved with the US organization founded by Milana Karenga and was in attendance for the first observance of Kwanzaa. The influence of this experience is reflected by his added last name, Sabira, which means patience in Swahili. Sabira then returned to the East Coast and wound up in Newark, New Jersey, where he became associated with the poet and activist Amiri Baraka. They worked in the successful mayoralty campaign of Kenneth Gibson, who, in 1970, became the first African-American mayor of any city in the northeastern region of the United States. Throughout the 70s, Sabira was an instructor of black studies at Seton Hall University in South Orange, New Jersey. In 1992, Sabira spoke at the third annual Burlington County Black Business Expo in New Jersey where he said he wanted to sell our people on selling. We came here as laborers and some of us still have that mentality that that's all we can do or are supposed to do, he said. Our idea how to make a living is that you sweat. For whites, it's get a product and you sell. In 1997, Sabira became a founding member of the Mata Network, an African-American company that distributes black manufactured products nationwide through a network marketing process. In 2002, he was selected as the East Coast Expansion Coordinator for CompProTax, an African-American-owned income tax preparation company. He helped open 20 tax offices in seven states. Sabira traveled the country expounding economic independence and development for African people and was in demand at schools and conferences. He gained wide recognition for his ideas, was interviewed on Tony Brown's journal, The Phil Donahue Show, as well as appearing in write-ups in Black Enterprise, Essence, Ebony, and Jet. And now, a lecture by Brother Sabira given at a bookstore in Trenton, New Jersey in 1997. Enjoy. I gave a lecture in Youngstown, Ohio, and it was about 200 people there. Nice turnout. Everybody was in their African garb, and everybody was all humble and just, you know, in the spirit. And just before I spoke, they had a brother get up in front of the room, and he said, before we had the program, let's pay homage to our ancestors and pour the libations, and he had everybody hold hands, and they started to he asked them to bow their heads and mention the names of forefathers and people who had gone on in the next life who had helped us fight the great battle, liberation. So I'm sitting there and I'm listening to 200 people roll off five, six, seven, eight, nine names. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. It hit me like a ton. I had to change the, I had to change my presentation that night. I mean, I was on next. As soon as they got finished saying that, I was supposed to get to the podium and speak. And I just, I was so hit with what I heard. And it surprised me so much that I had to kind of like change my whole presentation. What happened was this, to show you how deeply embedded in our psyche we are in terms of this business economic thing. I sat there and I listened to as many names as I could. And I heard the names of politicians. I heard the names of civil rights leaders. I heard the names of Jackie Robinson. I heard the names of athletes. I heard the names of musicians. I heard the names of all kinds of people. But guess what name you never hear? the name of prominent black business people. You will never hear prominent business people black. Don't make a difference how many black folks they hired. Don't make any difference how, many, how much money they loan people to get out of their jam. Doesn't make any difference what they invented to make people's life better. There's only one person that somehow escapes and her name is mentioned. One lady, does anybody know who I'm talking about? Madam C.J. Walker is the only black business person's name 
that you will ever hear when you hear about black people praising people in the past as business people. So I'm saying to myself, no, Sabir, do you know what these people are just telling you without knowing that they're telling you? They're telling you that in their mind, it's almost inconceivable for them to see a black person as both a business person and a hero or a liberation fighter at one and the same time. You either A or B, you can't be both. Right. So how is it that we can talk about economic development today and in the future when we have no intention of even recognizing what we've already done the hundred and some years we've been out of slavery? So I said, okay, that's something that I need to bring to their attention so they can see part, what part of the problem is. Part of the problem is our own programming with respect to business. Now, how did this come about? Well, I don't have a guarantee that I can explain to you how it came about, but I do have a theory as to how it came about. And the theory is this. And slavery was an extension of the capitalist system. And when you are against slavery and you are against a system that says reap the highest form of profit regardless of cost, even if it means genocide in terms of the Indians, even if it means slavery in terms of African Americans, then you just go ahead and do that because profit is the ultimate thing that we're looking for. And from that kind of anti-capitalist uh, thought, we developed an anti-business attitude. Not to speak, not to forget the fact that during the segregation uh, phases of our existence in the early 1900s and late to, I mean, mid 1900s. It was largely the business community that um, hired us at such, you know, measly wages and kept us out of uh, their concerns, had us coming at the back of the door and all that kind of stuff during era of segregation. And again, that did not endear us to them or them to us. And so I understand the genesis of the uh, anti-capitalist, therefore anti-business thought. But if that was so logical, then we would never run for governor. We would never run for mayor because we sure enough had racist mayors and we could talk about how corrupt the political system is and how we shouldn't be a part of that. But once it became clear, damn, if I can get enough people to vote for me and we can run this town, maybe we can make some changes. The same thing it appears to me could and should apply in the area of economics, but it just didn't go that way. It didn't go that way. We seem to have been willing to integrate and see as a tool for our use almost every aspect of American society except the economic system, which seems to be gaining favor more and more throughout all parts of the world that in the past couldn't care less about American capitalism. On December 5th, 2010, Sabir collapsed and died of a heart attack while jogging on the track at Penwood High School in East Lansdowne, just outside of Philadelphia, George Trower Sabira, Ma Keru, was 66 years old. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Ashe, oh. Ashe. You know, open those books, open our hearts. Yes. Wonderful. Yes, definitely. That taught us a lot in those in that few those few minutes. That's why I love historical tributes. That's one of the main reasons I came to Will Say and stayed at Will Say. All right. Next we'll have a song. Give thanks to Brother Jeff for being ready. By whomever is supposed to be. I know, right? <laughs> hey, Inclusion Saba Principles of Kwanzaa Inclusion Saba Principles for Alala Umoja is unity, unity. Us 
talking about us, not not you or me. Gucci chocolate, Gucci chocolate, it's a determination. We define ourselves, don't know what else. In Kuzu Saba, principles of Kwanza. In Kuzu Saba, in Kuzu Saba. Jeff for playing the other videos, the historical tributes and things. Um, thank you ever so much, everyone here. Uh, we have gotten a point into, uh, oh, one thing I wanted to mention was I really like the playing of that song outside of the seven days of Kwanzaa. 
Because, man, Kwanzaa is 365 days a year. Say that. You should always be thinking about that. Leaving it every single day. Just not leaving it in that little seven days. But to expand it out to 365 days for the entire year. So, yes, principles for our lives. I see. Okay. I see you. So now, I see. So now we've come to the point. Um for our litany of sacrifice. And we have Mama Connie and Minister Molly. Good morning, we'll say community. Sister Connie, we on you? I say, yes, Mama. I say, save us, O Holy One, by your name. Vindicate us by your might. Hear my prayer, divine protector. Listen to the words of my mouth. How can we repay the Holy One for the gifts that have been given to us? We will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the God of our ancestors. We will fulfill our vows to our Creator in the presence of all our people. Gladly, we bring our sacrifices to you. We praise your name, O Amen Ra, for it is good. Umoja, unity. We will strive to maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and race. Kuji Chagalia, self-determination. We shall define, name, create, and speak for ourselves. Ujima, collective work and responsibility. We shall build and maintain our communities together. Our brothers and sisters' problems shall be ours to solve together. Ujama, cooperative economics. Together, we shall build and maintain our own businesses and together profit from them. Nia, purpose. We shall make our collective vocation the building and developing of our community and the restoration of our people to our traditional greatness. Kuumba, creativity. We shall do as much as we can, in any way we can, to leave our community more beautiful and beneficial than when we inherited it. And finally, Imani, faith. We will believe with all our hearts and our God, our people, in the righteousness and victory of our struggle. Ashe. 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 So we, this is the point at which we encourage one another to practice the principle of Ujama by sharing in our benefits to the to the places of choice. You see the Wose Oakland and Wose community sites. Uh, you can also give to both if you shall. And we encourage you to do these offerings in the spirit that you have been blessed by the almighty Amin Ra. Ashe. 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 And we come together in prayer now. We thank you. We thank you, Amin Ra, creator. We thank everyone who could give today. We thank you for all of us that could bring our dollars today, our twos and fews, I call it, because it all adds up, whatever we bring today, whatever we, we bring, our time and our talents and our tithes are very important because bills are just a matter of reality. We're thankful for all of our communitarian spirit, that's what we do. We work in community. Communitarians, that's what we do. That's who we are. And we come together uh, to support each other, support this community. Our communities, our Sacramento and our Oakland communities. And we're so thankful, Mother, Father, God, because uh, we wanna be here for many years to come. We are growing our legacy here at Wose. And let's continue to do so each and every day. Ashe, thank you, thank you. Ashe, Ashe. Ashe, Aman.
Ashe. Thank you, Asante Sana Mamakani and Minister Mali. And now we've come to that portion of the service that we have all been awaiting. So I'm going to move my little self out the way as I announce Minister Bill to come forward with our message. Thank you, Minister Alicia. And grand rising, we'll say, grand rising. I'm glad for each and every one of you who could join us today as we gather to continue the grand work of creation. This morning, I want you to go with me on an extended trip back as far as we can imagine, then forward as far as we can imagine, back to a past where we can only project from things or to a future where we can only project from things. Recall, we should listen more often to things than to people. As Professor Ikwe Arma called us, we are hearers, seers, imaginers, thinkers, rememberers. Prophets call to communicate Truths of the living way. First, come imagine with me way, way back, before Kemet, before Nubia, before we crossed Arabia, before we populated India, before we found and settled the other continents. Our home is a vast and very continent. Surely it took our tiny people a long time, on foot, to even know where the motherland met the sea. Our people were surely hunter-gatherers for a very, very long time. Imagine someone saying then to our people, a people who had followed the roaming herds, hunting and gathering for uncountable generations. No, you should abandon the methods of your people. Abandon the practices you that have fed, clothed, and sheltered you all your lives, you should stay in this one spot, even as seasons come and go. You should save the seeds from the fruits you eat, save the stems from the leaves you eat, replant them, regrow them right here. Mm -hmm. We can hear the counter arguments in our minds. What happens when the seeds don't grow? While we're waiting for seeds to grow, our children will be hungry daily. While we're sleeping, elephants will come and eat all our plants and we'll starve. Wildebeest, antelope, and springbok we feed on will keep traveling. And the meals we feed our families will walk on by. Rains come and go. What happens when no rain comes and the nearest green leaves are several months walk away? Would you have our family starve? Yeah. In our time, we now know farming and herding as the foundation, the foundation which supported tiny bands of nomads gathering together in grand centers, centers of communication and learning, of communication and art, of communication and celebration. That persistent in gathering for communication supported the refinements and growth at no way at Timbuktu, at Waset, and everywhere we went. And now urbanization is the norm for all humanity. We should be clear about that transformation. It surely didn't happen in a blink. There was no grand plan, no singular planner, our scattered people magically followed. No, that's not how cultural growth and development works. As always, a few tried small experiments. Most of those experiments fail, and only rare few of them work. But by repeatedly building on those few successes, our people continue creating, and their creation is what we now enjoy. At any point, some imagined a flat earth because the earth near them seemed flat. In those early days, some surely said, yeah, we could spend long days breaking our backs, digging in the soil, but wild herds and forests are vast. And collaboration, that collaboration you think you'll find in the extra time you think you'll have will be sucked into digging and planting and watering and tending, only to have our results 
result inferior to what we find foraging, those will be eaten and quickly pooped out. But in 2023, you and I know how that all played out. In 2023, we face a new transformation. And the COVID pandemic is temporarily shining a spotlight on it. Now, Hollywood hypesters might call it, oh, it's created a glitch in the matrix. It's ripped a tear in the fabric of reality. But our faith is based on coherent understanding, not explosions, special effects, and hyperbole. We've seen ourselves briefly in that COVID tilted mirror, but the fun house is full of mirrors. And prior mirrors show us such warmly familiar images that we may quickly forget the new truths we saw in that COVID mirror. For now, we can still see in the COVID mirror and still hear our senior ministers. We hear Imhotep saying, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. We hear Makalisi saying, we are called to continue the process of creation. We hear Alicia saying, peace is cut off from the whole are nothing but dead fragments. We can read the words of our scholars. Stephen Biko saying, the most potent weapon in the hands of our oppressor is the mind of the oppressed. Carter G. Woodson told us, when you control a man's thinking, you don't have to worry about his actions. And our beloved George G.M. James reminded us the wisdom systems of ancient Kemet first required of initiates that they control their thoughts. Professor Arma understood clearly as individuals, our brain cells communicating is how we think. As individuals, we are lifeless lumps until the cells of our bodies are communicating. Now, as a people, talking and listening, reading and writing, and now recording and viewing are how we collectively think. That's how we think together as a people. And as a people, we become as lifeless lumps the less we communicate. Without coherent communication, we bump around without purpose or progress. Professor Arma wrote, creation calls the utterer to reach again the larger circle, and that communication must be the beginning of destruction's destruction, the preparation for creation's work. We are still in the belly of the beast. U.S. government taxes the poor and lets liars like Dole 45 pay zero. They pour seven to $800 billion a year into a military industrial complex. They call it the Department of Defense, the DOD, but it's more rightly called Defending Incumbents Department, the DID, because from day one, that's really what they did. Explicitly, they tax people, they did the research into people's lives, but then instead of returning that value to the people, they handed the results to corporations in forms the people couldn't use. Sadly, our power to change their actions is quite limited. Our primary way forward is self-reliance. Our ancestors controlled their thoughts and relied on themselves. Robert Smalls and a few selected friends figured out how to take a warship from a whole society full of enslavers, from a whole weaponized army bound to keep them in the yoke. They showed us the power of controlling our thoughts. When the US Army needed someone to show them the way through the Combahee swamps in South Carolina, when they were more desperate to win than die under the delusion of white male omnipotence, they followed the leadership of Harriet Tubman. 
who knew very well wisdom is rarer than diamonds, rarer than emeralds. She not only controlled her thoughts, she secretly talked with her people, with our people, and leveraged their collective wisdom toward freedom. Now, George G.M. James reminded us, Europeans stole those comedic insights about knowledge and wisdom and controlling thoughts a long, long time ago. And they use it against us whenever they can. Africans sharing knowledge by gathering, make that illegal. Africans sharing knowledge by writing and reading, make that illegal. Africans sharing knowledge by traveling, no, 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 make that illegal. So different in different white partitions we know as states, altogether, we know those white subjugations as quote unquote black codes. And we know why they want to call us N words or Negroes or mulattoes or quadroons or octoroons, Afro Americans, African Americans, anything except Africans. They know the power of our connected thoughts. They know the value and power they stole from the great African family by stealing so many of global Africa's children. They know our freedom and reconnecting of our global African family will mean they have to negotiate for the human resources of our people instead of just taking things by force or fraud as they've mainly done so far. Looking again at that 800 billion a year slush fund for the DID, we see that coercion and fraud continues, bolstering the same racist hegemons at long has. As many as we are in the US, even more Africans were stolen into Brazil and South America. And global Europe, noticing Haiti's persistent pandemic of <clears throat> drapetomania, the quote unquote disease of not wanting to be enslaved, has sought to remedy Haiti's illness with everything possible. Bullets, bombs, made up debts, puppet governments, fracking induced earthquakes, poison pills labeled aid, seeding, signifying, and promoting hatred in Haiti's neighbors. Everything except welcoming an African people respectfully into a peaceful community of nations. At home, the DID, the Defending Incumbents Department, their most insidious work proceeds brazenly under a fig of quote unquote patriotism. Daily, they pour our taxes into feeding the largest corporations, the most valuable assets, tax-funded research insights. And they do that at any price, since with our taxes in hand, money is no object. Even with our modest research and our modest resources, well-researched collaborative learning remains our best investment. Ile Omade is a great start. But as COVID underscored, we are now all in an internet age. We need to thoroughly grasp how the world communicates now. We need to understand that communication and put it to our use. I'll leave you with a few more words from 2000 seasons which our book group is now studying. Professor Arma says, how inadequate the seeing that remains broken off, unconnected to any larger perception. How lacking in sufficiency, the hearing unconnected to a greater knowledge. How stupid the utterance, cut off from the higher understanding of the connected whole. Monstrous, the barrenness of people when outside the lonely, cut off self there is no connection with the whole. The disease of death, the white road, is also unconnected sight. The fractured vision, 
that sees only the immediate present, that follows only present gain and separates the present from the past, the past from the future, shutting each passing day in its own hustling grief. The disease of death, the white road, is also unconnected hearing, the shattered hearing that listens only to today's brazen cacophony. That disease of death, the white road, is also unconnected thinking, the broken reason that thinks only of the immediate paths to the moment's release, that takes no care to connect the present with the past events, the present with future necessity. Our vocation goes against all unconnectedness. That is our vocation, to find our larger healing selves. We the Black people. P pieces cut off from their whole are nothing but dead fragments. Beware those destroyers. It's their habit to cut off fingers from the hand itself uprooted from its parent body, calling each fallen piece a creature in itself, different from eyes, ears, noses, feet, and entrails, other individual creatures of their making. Is it a wonder we've been flung so far away that our people are scattered even into the desert across the sea, over and away from our land, and we have forgotten how to recognize ourselves? No wonder at all. That our left eye should be set to see against its twin, not with it. Surely, that is part of the white destroyers 2,000 seasons of triumph against us. That the sight of the eye should be unconnected, cut off from the mind's embracing consciousness. That the ear's hearing should be blocked off from the larger knowledge of the mind. That the nose smelling and the tongue's tasting should be pushed apart from the mind's whole consciousness. What is that but death's whiteness in delirious triumph? that the hand should touch and the knowledge of the substance touch should stay trapped in the touching hand alone, that feeling fingertips should each in itself alone contain the shut off knowledge of members estranged from each other. Could that be different from the blighting success of the white destroyer's road? Ludicrous is the freedom of the slave unchained in a single body if his mind remains a cut off individual mind not a living piece of our common mind, our common soul. For the absence of that necessary connectedness of the soul, that will live. What is any slave body's freedom but the destroyer's license contemptuously given to the slave? Against the death brought by whiteness, only the greatest connecting force will prevail the working together of minds connected, souls connected, traveling along that one way, our way, the way. Connected thought, connected action, that is the beginning of our journey back to ourself, to living again the connected life, traveling again along our way, the way. How infinitely stupefying the prison of single unconnected viewpoints, station of the cutoff vision. How deathly the separation of faculties, the separation of people, the single agent's action is wasted motion. A single agent's freedom useless. Such individual action can find no sense until there is again that higher connectedness that links each agent to the group. Then the single person is no cutoff thing, but an extension of the living group. The single piece, the single but a piece of the group's active will. Each mind a part of a larger common mind. Then each I aspires itself with visions springing from group need. That is so critical. We need to see the group 
need. When we see that, then our ears are open to the sounds beneficial from the listening group. Our limbs move and hands act in unbroken connection with the group. Now we've reached that time when we must speak of consciousness, of unconnected consciousness. Is there more to say beyond the clear recognition this is destruction's keenest tool against the soul? That the left hand should be kept ignorant of what the right twin is made to do? Who doesn't see in that cleavage the prime success of the white destroyer's road of death? That the passion and the thinking and the action of any one of us should be cut off from our connected consciousness by mere physical things, walls of wood or walls of stone, that would indeed be the manic celebration of death's white empire. Again, creation calls the utterer to reach again the larger circle. That communication must be the beginning of destruction's destruction, the preparation for creation's work. This is not a small task. Endless is our struggle. Endless it must seem to those whose vision reaches only to the end of today. But those with ears connected to our soul will hear a message calling us to a better life to a life closer to our ancient way, to a preparation for the best, the only living way. It is that vengeance for our own single selves we have been seeking in this work. Those who can see, those able to hear, let them hear this. We are preparers of paths to the way that was our way. It will be our way again. Harambe! Harambe, Harambe. Mr. Lisha? Ashe. Ashe. Thank you, Brother Bill. Great, Bill. Great job. Harambe. Thank you. Ashe. Harambe, Harambe, Harambe. Harambe. Let's all pull together <laughs> at all times and at all ways. We need each other. So give thanks. give thanks so much for Bill bringing the IT <laughs> and the spirit together for us at this time, at this place, bringing us from way back in the past to way forward in the future, all together, bringing us all together. All right, so next we will have um, the invitation by Minister Molly, Lift Every Voice and Sing by Baba Jeff. And the close with Minister Molly and the wrap up and announcements with Minister Imhotep. Thank you ever so much, Asante Sana, for letting me be your your worship coordinator today. And we had we've had a wonderful service. Thank you so much for everybody who has participated, everybody who sat back and enjoyed all of the music and the prayers and the libations and the it, just all of it. So thank you. Next um, up. As I said, Minister Mali with the invitation. We can't hear you, brother. You are muted. Minister Mali. Minister Mali. <clears throat> Unmute yourself, sir. You are doing the invitation. Okay, well, once again, that was a bit of a surprise. Well, let me uh, say, to all of those that listen to that stirring, powerful, energetic message, there might have been something in it that has motivated or touched you. There might have been something in it that has inspired in you a feeling. We have a community that wants that has been trying to practice these principles. And perhaps if you have not joined that community, if you have not formally entered into that relationship, this is your opportunity now. We want to invite you to step out on faith, to join us, to help practice these principles, to come together in a unified manner so that we can progress ourselves 
towards a legacy, a legacy of progress. Ashe? Ashe. And so you can do it in a number of manners. There are, are many ministers that you can email or you can enter your name in the chat or you could, there's, this, I believe, a symbol on Zoom and email where you can press your hand and uh, trust me, a minister will get in contact with you to follow up with your request. I see. I see. If there, I can't tell if there has been anybody that's requested to uh, join, but I do see a lot of thank yous and responses. Um, I'll turn it back over to you, Minister Alicia. Yeah, thanks. And so like um, Bob, um, uh, Minister Molly said, if you would like to join us, please um, put your information in the chat or, or um, hit one of us up. So um, lift every voice and sing, Baba Jeff.
Ah, she, ah, she, my goodness. Sister Destiny. She, she, she. Sister Destiny was always so beautiful, her, the music, and it just like takes the song to a different level. Uh, so now when the one able to lift us faultlessly from a throne on high, may they empower us to be one people. One people. With one aim. One, one aim. aim. One destiny. One, one destiny. destiny. One love. One, one love. love. One heart. One, one heart. heart. And one God. One and one God. God. And let us call upon the name of that one God as our ancestors and elders have done for countless times and for time immemorial. Let us all say. Amen. You are the most the beautiful, beautiful people, people on the face of this earth. earth. Ashi. 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 Ashi.